Okay, so it's that time of the month and we are back with another best new games to play in October. And I know I say this every month, but we've got some great new games to cover today, including one or two you've probably never heard of. So clear your diary, clear your storage, and tell me what games you are hyped for. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. And kicking off the month of Halloween with one of the best survival horror series out there is Silent Hill. And can you believe it has been 12 years since the last instalment? But this time we're getting a remake of the 2001 game Silent Hill 2. Now we know the original is an absolute masterpiece, so this remake does have a lot to live up to. But what we can say is from the early gameplay, trailers and that 6 hour stream that we shouldn't really be talking about, this looks incredible. And I'm pretty excited to see how it turns out when it launches in the first half of the month. Now this isn't just a remaster as it's a full remake, so we're getting the same storyline and characters as we've seen before, but this time with updated visuals and graphics, as well as some new PlayStation 5 features. This includes haptic feedback and adaptive triggers, as well as 3D audio. You know, there is no better way to play a horror game than sitting in the dark with a pair of headphones on. That's how you really test how scared you get while gaming. Now, it's also said that the remake does stay true and faithful to the original game. So if you are a Silent Hill fan, I'm hopeful that we're in good hands with this one. Also, there is still lots and lots of fog, so it's going to be just as eerie and scary as before. So the Silent Hill 2 remake launches on October 8th, and that's coming to PC and the PlayStation 5. And while we're talking about horror games, if you fancy returning to Blackwood Mountain, we're getting a rebuilt from the ground up remake of Until Dawn. Now, I didn't think this could possibly look any better, but it turns out redeveloping the entire game in Unreal Engine 5 has created these stunning graphics. Now, the entire visuals have been overhauled and rebuilt, with huge improvements to the lighting, character models, the environment, and the animations. In fact, they are so confident in the improvements that they've made to this game, the developers have uploaded a side by side comparison comparison showing just that. And it's weird because this is what I kind of remember the game looking like. But what's great is, even with the improved visuals, it doesn't take away from the fact that this is a horror game, so it clearly still looks moody, dark and gritty. It's also got a new camera control mechanic, so you can use different fixed and over-the-head shoulder views. Now, it's also been confirmed that although it's sticking to the original storyline and narrative, some tweaks have been made to improve the overall flow and emotion of the story, as well as the character narrative, which I don't think is a bad thing. So yep, Until Dawn is coming to the PS5 and PC on October 4th. And if games like Helldivers 2 and Space Marine 2 weren't enough for your bug-killing fetishes, we're getting Starship Troopers Extermination in October. I mean, what a year it has been for pest control. Would you like to know more? So this takes place in the same universe as the movies, so it's filled to the brim with various bugs across multiple planets that you'll need to team up and take down with up to 16 players. Now, not only do you need to exterminate the bugs, but you'll have various missions and bases to build and an extraction point to get to. Now, I'll be honest, I kind of feel bad for the devs on this one. That's not to say this isn't going to be a great game, because it looks awesome, but I feel that it's already been eclipsed and overshadowed by Helldivers 2. Now, I know they are different games, but for the non-core fans of Starship Troopers, these two games kind Kind of look the same. Either way, I'm doing my part, now I just need to find a squad to play with. But what do you think? Will you be playing Starship Troopers Extermination when it drops on October 11th? And that's coming to the PS5, Xbox Series and PC. And here's a couple of retro games I wanted to throw in the mix. So on October 18th, we're getting two classic horror movies which have been turned into 16-bit games. First up is Halloween, where you get to play as Michael Myers slicing your way through the town and fighting various characters from the movies that you'll probably be familiar with. Seriously, this looks really cool, and the music alone definitely wins me over. Then we have Ash vs Evil Dead, where you can use both a chainsaw and a shotgun to clear the path through the hordes. And what's great is, both of these games are packaged together, and it's coming to Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and the Switch. Now, I'll be honest, I'm kind of hoping this does really well, as I think Retro Realms could be onto something. They then have the potential to create games like Child's Play or Nightmare on Elm Street, which I think would be really nice to see. And then we can all pretend that we won't be playing this, as it's kind of a love-hate relationship, but we get the 75th installment of Call of Duty in October, and this time we're heading back to the Black Ops series. And I, for one, am ridiculously hyped to play this again. I actually jumped on the beta weekends we had last month, and I seriously had a lot of fun with it. So the main campaign is set during the early 90s, and it follows on from Cold War, which released back in 2020. And you know what? From the early gameplay that we've seen from the campaign, this actually looks alright. I mean, I would expect it to take, what, around 8 hours to complete, as they're never really huge stories, but they are generally pretty decent to play. It always feels like you're playing a movie with the various cutscenes and the cinematic style. 
And then of course we've got the multiplayer, which let's face it, is probably the main reason we all pick this up. At launch we're getting 16 brand new maps including Skyline, Payback, Rewind and Scud. And then various game modes that we're all familiar with like Search, Domination and TDM. And something that I'm really pleased to see is we finally get the return of the classic prestige system. So we get to grind and prestige our way through the ranks and show off just how much time we actually play it. Oh, and that new omnidirectional movement took some getting used to during the beta, where you can now run, slide and dive in every direction. I guess you'll either love or hate this, but stick with it and you'll be able to get some pretty cool kills and dives with it as well. And then on top of the normal multiplayer and the campaign, we also get zombies. This is the round based zombie mode where you can either play this solo or team up with up to three mates taking down hordes and completing the main quest. So make sure you clear all of your storage as Black Ops 6 drops on October the 25th. And that's coming to PlayStation, Xbox and PC. May God continue to bless the United States of America. And then towards the end of October, we are getting the fourth installment in a series that is a bit of a guilty pleasure for me, and that's Life is Strange. I actually remember playing the original back in 2015, and although I'm probably not the target audience for this, I actually really enjoyed it. And it turned out to be a pretty special game. If you've played it, you'll know what I mean. Well, nine years on, we are getting Life is Strange double exposure. And for the Life is Strange fans out there, this is going to be bittersweet, as we're getting the return of Max. So it's a direct sequel to the original game, where we were once again focus on Max and her powers, only this time instead of rewinding time, she discovers that she has the ability to experience two parallel timelines. It's going to be really interesting to see how they do this, because I kind of feel like following on from the first game will be tough, especially with the decision that we had to make at the end. Also, the art style is completely different to the original game, but I've still got high hopes that the soundtrack, story and characters will keep us hooked throughout. So Life is Strange Double Exposure drops on October the 29th, and that's coming to PS5, Xbox Series and PC. And if you're on the Switch and you're a fan of Mario who isn't, we're getting 110 mini games across 7 boards in Super Mario Party Jamboree. This is a multiplayer party game where you'll get to navigate across a game board, collecting coins in order to purchase stars. It's absolutely rammed with mini games, with mini game bay being the main mode for the game. There's also a motion controlled mode called Paratrooper Flight School, where you have to flap your arms like wings to control the character. Now it's great to see so many playable characters returning, including Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad and Bowser. I mean the whole crew is here, so you'll get to play as many of these as you want. So Super Mario Party Jamboree launches on the Switch on October 17th, so get ready to argue with your family members while still trying to beat them. And talking of fighting, it has been years since we had a boxing game. So if you're in the mood to throw hands in the ring, we get Undisputed dropping in October. It is launching with more than 70 licensed fighters across 10 weight classes. And that includes Tyson Fury and Terence Crawford, as well as legends like Muhammad Ali. Now not only can you choose to play as one of those licensed fighters, but you can create your own fighter and progress through the career mode, taking it from amateur to pro with coaches, managers and promoters. From the early gameplay that we've seen, this is looking good. It's also already been in early access on Steam for the last 18 months. And looking at the reviews, it's got more than 13,000 reviews, putting it at 71%. So Undisputed launches on October the 11th, and that's coming to PS5, Xbox Series, and PC. And we get a classic character returning to our screens this month in Sonic X Shadow Generations. Is it X or Cross? I'm going to go with X. So in this new game, we get to play as Shadow as the main playable character, but it also comes bundled with a remaster of Sonic Generations from 2001, hence the crossover in the title. So as mentioned, we get to play as Shadow with new abilities, new enemies, and some classic recognisable ones as well. And this has to be the best a Sonic game has ever looked. Oh, and guess who's going to be voicing Shadow as part of the Movie Pack DLC? None other than Keanu Reeves. That's breathtaking. So Sonic X Shadow Generations drops on October 25th, and that's coming to PlayStation, Xbox, PC, and Switch. And then the creators behind Persona 3, 4 and 5 are bringing us a new JRPG, this time called Metaphor Refantasio. It's an upcoming game set in a mirrored version of the United Kingdom, complete with British accents and all. This takes the Persona style and formula that we've seen before, but they've added a new take that I think works really well. So instead of sticking to just the classroom or school setting, this game takes us outside and into this fantasy world. Combat will once again rely on a turn-based and real-time action system, so something that we are obviously familiar with. It's also been confirmed that the story length is around the same as Persona 5, so it could be anywhere between 100 and 150 hours long if you want to complete absolutely everything. So Metaphor Refantasio launches on October the 11th, and that's coming to Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. 
And for those who are a fan of the Dragon Ball series, there's a new entry dropping in October as well. This time, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is an action 3D fighter game and it's the fourth game in the series, still staying true to the anime and video game series. So it takes the legendary gameplay that we've all come to love and brings it to a whole new level. Although you will of course still build up your gauge to execute various damage inflicting attacks. We've also got 3D fighting mechanics, enhanced graphics and some new combat features. And if you thought choosing a player was ever limited, surpassing any previous game in the series. Now I'll be honest, I've never really gotten into these games so my experience and knowledge is pretty limited but it does look great so dragon ball spark in zero releases on ps5 xbox series and pc on october 11th and if you felt we ever needed a remaster of horizon zero dawn from 2017 well you're in luck as it's getting a remaster this month as well so this was actually announced at state of play a couple of days ago and this is the original horizon game in the series but what they've done is they've taken the same look and style from forbidden west and applied it here it's also getting new and improved lighting and textures so on the whole it will look and play a lot better than before although saying that it wasn't a bad looking game anyway and the good news is, if you've got the PS4 version, even if you redeemed it during the Stay at Home initiative back in the day, you can upgrade to the remastered version for just $10. So Horizon Zero Dawn is coming to PS5 and PC on October 31st. So that was a quick look at the new games we'll get in October 2024. Now a few really stand out to me including Call of Duty, Silent Hill 2 and Life is Strange. But there are definitely enough in here to keep us busy throughout the entire month. But what about you? Are there anything that you're really hyped to play? Now drop a nice October games in the comments and I'll give you a thumbs up for saying right till the end. And thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and follow me everywhere. Until next time. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part.